Now, before anybody asks, yes, I absolutely am using ketchup on the dry erase board. What do you guys think? I hoarded markers for my own good, huh? Question? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, yeah, you can use the restroom. You're in your own home. This is you just get up and go. Do you not have a? Do you need a toilet or something? I didn't get the assignment. How would I even lose it? You upload it. Did did the dog eat the attachment? What's come on? And as you can see, children, I have an antenna for my TV, which hopefully drops me down a few notches on your list when the purge finally happens. I'm gonna be honest, students. This is quite exhausting. The days have turned into weeks. The weeks have turned into months. The months have turned into professional development seminars. So for think, pair, share, I guess for the pair part, you just open the window and just yell out your answer. And it's fine. Uh, woo! I don't know what's scarier: the fact that I just heard an answer being yelled because somebody believed me, or that a child lives that close to my house. <laughs> Right, yeah, I completely hear you. Hey, would you mind holding for just a second? I just got to get the kids back from recess. Hey, kids, could you guys come inside? Recess is over. Come on. Come on, guys. Kids, look, all I'm saying is you get six people underneath of you to sell the candles, and then we're all making money. We don't have to do this anymore. So for this lecture, we're going to be covering molecular formulas, so stay tuned for that. But just to remind you, the wardrobe theme for this week is hoodies from high school. This is one from when I was in, uh, when I was a junior in high school, and I was in football, and uh, we won zero games that year. So anyways, let's get started. This week, we're going to be talking about molecular formulas. So those are kind of the ways that we write down or abbreviate a molecule without having to draw it completely out. You guys have probably seen something like this before. Hopefully things will come easily to you, uh, but there are some kind of weird twists that you need to look out for. This can be challenging at times. So just to remind you, a molecule, when I say a molecule, what am I talking about? A molecule are multiple atoms attached together in bonds. So there are multiple atoms bonded together into a bigger thing to make a molecule. So examples would be like H2O, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, sugars are molecules, proteins are molecules, pretty much everything in your body is a molecule or anything you need to survive is a molecule of some sort. Um, so to start off here, I just have a simple molecule. This simple molecule is hydrogen gas, okay? It's, it's just two hydrogens put together. And so what you can see here is that Right here, I have the element symbol for hydrogen, but then I have this little two next to it. And so that little two is called the subscript. It's called the subscript. So um, the subscript always applies to whatever is to its left. Okay, do not let that point pass you by. The subscript, that little letter or that little number, sorry, always applies to the to the atom or to the element that is to its left. Whatever is to the left of this number, that's what it applies to. So what the subscript tells us is it just tells us um, the number of atoms in this case, right? It just tells us the number of hydrogens in this case. Now, if there were carbon here instead of hydrogen, it would tell us the number of carbons. Uh, if there were chlorine here instead of hydrogen, it would tell us the number of chlorine. So you guys kind of get the idea. Now, H2, what would that molecule actually look like in real life? So what that's telling us is that that is two hydrogen atoms bonded together. So here what I've drawn, I've drawn two hydrogen atoms and then a little dash in between them to signify the bond. Now, there's right and wrong ways to draw molecules, but that's not what we're learning about right now. What we're only learning about right now is these ways of writing the formulas, okay? So this seems pretty straightforward. H2 is just two hydrogen atoms bonded together. But the question then is, what happens 
if I put a big number in front of it? Like what if I put a three in front of that whole formula? And so what the three is called, that big number, it's what's called the coefficient. It's called the coefficient. Okay? And what's important about the coefficient and what you need to realize is that it tells you the number of separate molecules. The coefficient tells you the number of molecules, of whole molecules. Okay, So um, I'm going to put a little parenthesis here because this 3 actually applies to the whole thing, okay, to the whole thing. Now, there, there's probably not going to be parentheses there most of the time when you look at it, but you need to understand that this 3 kind of gets carried over to the rest. So now what we're saying is that we have three separate H2 molecules. So here, instead of only having one, I now have two, three. So do you guys see what I did there? By putting the big coefficient 3 in front of this formula, I'm saying that there are three separate molecules here. All right, so um, even with that information, let's do a couple of examples. Here's the first question. How many total atoms are in CH3? So that's, a, that's all one molecule. How many atoms, how many total atoms are in CH3? So um, the way I'm going to kind of do this is I'm going to count up the number of individual atoms. Okay, So how many carbon atoms are there? Well, you'll notice that there is no number down and to the right of it. There's no number there. And so what that means is that there's just one. Okay, You don't have to write the one. Um, it's just assumed that there's a one there if there's nothing written there. So that means that there is one carbon. How many hydrogens are there in this atom? Well, obviously there's three. Because remember, that little three applies to just the hydrogen. Okay, It only applies to the thing to its left. So there's three hydrogens. So one plus three is four atoms. Okay, The number of total atoms in this is four. All right, let's do another example. How many total atoms are in two PO4? Okay, two. PO4. And so I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to count up how many phosphorus atoms are there, how many oxygen atoms are there, and then I'm going to add up the total. But there's going to be a little bit of a twist this time, which is that 2 that's out in front, that coefficient 2. Okay, But let's ignore the 2 for now. Let's, let's just pretend that the 2 isn't there. Let's just count up the atoms that way. Okay, So 2PO4, but let's ignore the 2. How many phosphorus atoms are there? How many P's are there? There's only one. How many oxygens are there? There's four. So there are five atoms, okay? But remember, there's a 2 in front of it. There's a coefficient 2. And so that 2, even though there's not parentheses here, I'm just drawing it, them in to help you. But that 2 applies to the whole thing, because what I'm saying, or what that 2 is saying, is that we actually have two separate PO4 molecules. They're called phosphates. Okay? So we actually have to take this times 2. We take whatever was there times 2, and so we have 10 total atoms. Okay? So what would that look like? Well, what that would look like is if I had a... PO4 molecule over here, and then I had another PO4 atom over there. I've got two separate PO4 atoms. All right, uh, another example problem, but this time we're going to throw in a little bit of a uh, twist here, and we're going to actually include parentheses. Sometimes you might look at a molecular formula and it'll actually have parentheses in it. So how do we handle those? Okay. The question is, how many oxygens are in MgOH2? So the, the, uh, the rule here for the two 
is still the same. That little two applies to whatever is to the left of it, okay? But in this case, what's to the left of it is an O and an H, but the O and an H are in a parenthesis. So that means that the two applies to both of them, okay? The two applies to the H, the two applies to the O. Does that make sense? So here, let's count up the atoms. M, G, O, and H. So how many magnesium atoms are there? There's only one, right? There's nothing beside it, so that means there's only one. Now, it looks like there's one oxygen and one hydrogen, but notice the two applies to the parentheses. So there's actually two oxygens and two hydrogens. Okay, there's two oxygens and two hydrogens. So how many oxygens are actually in this molecule? The answer is two. The answer is two. So what would this uh, what would this molecule actually look like? Well, it would have one magnesium. And then it's attached to two separate OH pairings. Okay, so that's kind of one thing, that's kind of one thing, but they're both attached to the magnesium, and so that's why there's a two in front of these parentheses. Okay, let's try a different one. This one's a little bit more interesting. How many oxygens are in CA? NO3, 2. CaNO3, 2. This is called calcium nitrate. All right, so um, just for the sake of things, let's count up the individual atoms again. We've got calcium, we've got uh, nitrogen, and we've got oxygen. Okay, so calcium's easy. There's only one calcium atom there, so we put one. Now with nitrogen and oxygen, something a little bit different is going on, okay? Um, notice that there's a two outside the parentheses, so the, the two is talking about the nitrogen and the oxygen because they're both within the parentheses. So how many nitrogens are there? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two times the number of nitrogens, which is one. So that means that there are two nitrogens, okay? What about oxygens? Well, inside the parentheses, there's already three oxygens, okay? So we have to take that times two as well. So two times three is six. So the number of oxygens is six. So what would this atom look like? Or what would this molecule look like? Well, it would have a calcium in the middle, and then it would have, it'd be attached to a nitrogen on both sides, and then each nitrogen would be attached to three oxygens. Okay, now this is not any, this is not really exactly what the, what the molecule looks like in real life, but I'm just drawing this so you kind of get the idea. There's one calcium, two nitrogens, and six oxygens total. Let's try a little bit different of an approach here. Here, what I'm doing is I'm giving you actually a molecule. I'm giving you a fully drawn out molecule and I want you to come up for the uh, come up with the formula for it. Okay so here we've got a sulfur atom in the middle and then we've got four oxygens attached around the outside and then one hydrogen attached to one of the oxygens. Okay and in this case I know some of them are single lines and some of them are double lines. You don't need to pay any attention to that for this. Okay so what is the molecular formula for this. Well, I got to tell you, typically um, we put these, um, we write the letters in alphabetical order. Now you're not always going to see that, but sometimes you, you write them in alphabetical order. So alphabetical order would be um, H first, uh, then S, then O. Okay, so I'm going to write H, S, just like that. Okay. 
how many hydrogens do I have? I have one. So I could, I could put a one right there, but I'm not going to. We don't need to. Okay. How many sulfurs do we have? We only have one. How many oxygens do we have? Well, we have four. Okay. So this molecule is HSO4. Okay. HSO4. Let's try another one. What is the molecular formula for this? Now notice here, we've got two separate molecules. Now each molecule has a chlorine in the middle. It's surrounded by oxygen. It's kind of similar to the last one. But notice there's two separate molecules in this case. So how would we write that, um, that molecular formula? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down H, C, L, O. Okay. Now, you might be wondering, Mr. Quaring, why did you write it that way? Um, this is not in alphabetical order. Did you just lie to us a couple minutes ago? Okay. The answer is, is that I know some things that you don't know at this point. Um, I know that this is an acid. And so typically when we write acids, we put H and then oxygen last. Um, but um, understand that when, if you write down formulas, as long as at this point, I'm not going to be super particular about what order you put the letters in. Okay, I just want you to understand how the different um, numbers, the coefficients, and the subscripts work. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, though. Here's what we're going to do. We have to look at one molecule at a time. Okay, I know that there's two molecules here, but we got to look at one molecule at a time. So let's just look at this one. How many hydrogens do we have? We only have one. How many chlorines do we have? We only have one. How many oxygens do we have? We have four. Okay, so we did this for just one of the molecules, but what would we do if there were two molecules like there is here? Well, what we would need to do is we would need to put a big two in front of the whole thing. Okay, so understand, when I put a big two in front of here, it applies to the whole thing. It applies to the whole thing. And understand, you can't just put a big number anywhere. You can't just put the two, like you, you can't put the two there or there. You can't put a big two there. You can only put big numbers on the outside or on the front of a molecule like this. So this molecule or the way we would write this is 2HClO4. That's it for this week. Uh, be sure to join me on Tuesdays and Thursdays for our Zoom Q&A sessions if you have a question or need some help. Remember, I'm always available during my office hours for individual Zoom sessions, emails, or texts over the Remind app. See ya. Bye.